Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No matter what time of night or day, I'm still just as glad that you stopped by the channel. Thank you ever so much. I am Reverend Paul J. Bryan, the uh, online pastor of the online faith-based community known as the Social Gospel Worship and Learning Center. Based in Atlanta, Georgia, and sending blog postings and videos around the world proclaiming the good news of Jesus and the validity of his teachings. More so today, more more so than ever before. Today will be another installment of my ongoing biblical study series on the writings of the Apostle Paul. We recently finished up the Book of Romans and we are now in 1 Corinthians. This will be the conclusion of chapter 1 today. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to finish up the first chapter of 1 Corinthians and our continuing series of the writings of the Apostle Paul. In last week's lesson, we went into detail regarding Paul's appeal to the early church for unity among its members. But in the second half of, of uh, chapter 1, Paul changes gears and talks about the definition of wisdom from God's viewpoint and how man's definition of wisdom is considered by God to be foolishness, silliness. I'm beginning today's lesson from where we left off last week, starting at verse 18. And I quote, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where? is the scholar where is the philosopher of this age has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world for through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block for Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Gentiles, both Jews and Greeks, as the text says here, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Close quote. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. This is precisely where that came from. Now let's talk about this. Let's talk about, let's talk about God's supremacy over human wisdom and intelligence. To quote the scripture here, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. There are those unfortunate individuals who simply refuse to believe in Jesus, or who deny that he is the Son of God, who rose from the dead on the morning of the third day. It is mainly those people who scoff at Christianity. 
any of these people who refuse to believe are atheists. Although there are those who I will respect their opinions, the whole idea of there being no God at all is very foreign to many, including myself. Any person who says there is no God is really saying that mankind is the highest form of life and intellect in existence. Personally, I don't believe that for one second. There has got to be something more. So, I do not believe that mankind is the end of all things. Besides, in the very next sentences, Paul writes, I will, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Albert Einstein, arguably one of the smartest men who ever lived, is incomparable to God in terms of intellect, and wisdom, and discernment. Paul wrote those words 1900 years before Einstein lived. Just to give, put a little perspective on all of this. Now, let me quickly continue. The way of the world and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. How do they compare? Well, look at what Paul wrote in the very next sentence. And I'm quoting, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Close quote. To explain this, I could just say it another way. The world, wise though it may seem to us, and it's, and wise though it may seem in its own way, pardon me, does not know God spiritually or intellectually. God made the world to be this way because it pleased him to do so. Because only in this way could he, make, could he then make a path of salvation back to himself through his son, Christ Jesus. By the same token, God was similarly pleased with men who preached without the baptism of the Spirit. Now more on that later in the separate study. Not because they did so willfully, but rather because they had been unaware of the existence of Spirit, Holy, by that I mean Holy Spirit baptism. In other words, the Spirit of the Lord can cause men to act as if they were in the Spirit, whether they had received the baptism of the Spirit or not. One does not need to go to a church in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If anybody has ever told you that, they're not telling you the truth. Or they just plain don't know what they're talking about. But at any rate, this brings us to the topic of our place in God's universe. And I'm quoting Paul once again. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Close quote. This bit of scripture is a continuation of where Paul quoted further above from the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 14. 
I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Close, uh, close quote. And again, it is written in the Old Testament, God's weakness is stronger than man's strength. Such are the stark reminders of man's place in the universe. Stark reminders indeed. Paul, con uh, Paul then continues this train of thought, picking up, picking up where he left off in verse 26. And I quote here, Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before them, before him, pardon me so that no one may boast before him. It is because of God that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts Boast in the Lord. Close quote. First Corinthians chapter one, verses twenty-six through thirty-one, is where that came from. That comprises the last of our study verses for this week. Now I'm going to move closer to the closing. The least common denominator to all this is that God is in control. In the first sentence, Paul is reminding the early church of where they were before they were saved. In the same way, we Christians are to be doing the same thing today. We should be ever mindful of where we were before we were saved, especially spiritually. But God then reassures us through Paul's words, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. He, called, he, ch he chose the lowly things, the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. Close quote. All those people who are in the highest echelons of government and of organized religion, they think they have things all figured out. They are sure that they know what is best for the rest of us. You could be sure that they boast about that among themselves. Of course they do. But it is the rest of us who know that God is the one in control. Quoting the text once again. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. And finally, we all need to be drawing ourselves closer to God. Drawing, drawing ever closer. So now we have an improved way 
to keep a better perspective on things. We know what true wisdom is and its origin. And we know that part of true wisdom is recognizing the fact that we are very insignificant compared with God and that we should never second guess God. Instead, we are to keep focused on Him and His Word as a guide throughout life. Let's all start doing this together today as we draw closer to Him so that He can be closer to us. And next week we'll move on to chapter 2. Shalom. Shalom. This concludes the uh, ongoing uh, uh, ongoing Bible, uh, Bible study series excuse me for this week. If you look at the uh, comment section at the bottom of the page down there you'll find uh, two different places you can donate if you want to send a donation to help keep this ministry afloat. We are um, registered nonprofits on PayPal as well as on Stripe. You can make donations through either of those. Sorry, I don't have any more than that right now. I am going to fix that as soon as I can find the time and figure out how to do it. <clears throat> don't worry. I'll get it fixed. But until then, there is one other way that you can help support the ministry, and that is if you would please subscribe to our blog, of which I am obviously the author. The Social Gospel Worship and Learning Center, or on YouTube, the Social Gospel Channel. The um, oh, the uh, weekly. No, actually, this is it's bi-weekly. Um, sorry, my mind. Is anyway. support the blog at $5 a month or $50 a year to subscribe. That's the word I was trying to think of for subscriptions. By all means, help support us in these trying times. And if you can't send any money right today, it's okay. I understand. Been there myself. Sometimes I'm close to being there again. But that's another story. Don't forget to give me a like and a share or two and a subscribe before you move on. sincerely thank each and every one of you for the privilege of your time. You are all so very much appreciated. Having said all that I could think of to say for the moment, everybody be blessed. Yes, I said be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name.